Angels spring training rolls along and today from Tempe Diablo Stadium is the Angels against the Colorado Rockies on a sunny and warm afternoon at Tempe Diablo Stadium. Great to have you with us. I'm Jose Mora alongside Mark Gubazov from our set here in Southern California. Mark, we got the great news yesterday about the fact that we know how important the fans are. Fans will be allowed to go into Angel Stadium for the opener. What do you think about that? Jose, that is great news. Just talking to Mike Trout last year and a number of the players on the Angels, how difficult it was to stay focused with no fans there. So now we're going to have some fans there, about 9,000 or so. And they're going to be screaming. It's going to be a lot of fun there at the Big A this season with the fans there. I expect a little bit more out of the players going forward. Especially players like the guy who's been the story here for this first week of spring training. Boy, he has put on a display with the bat and yesterday with the arm. His name is Shohei Otani. I don't know if you can tell, but I am smiling right now to see what we're seeing from Shohei Otani so far in spring training. A 468-foot home run for Shohei Otani. Staying back. Not a lot of movement in his feet, and that's the most important thing as far as getting that swing together. A lot of really good, important swings for Shohei so far. And then you see him throwing 100 miles an hour on the mound yesterday. Splitter was nasty, pretty much around 96 to 99 on a consistent basis. Jose, I really like what he's doing now. Starting from that stretch position, leaves him more compact in his delivery. Boy, he worked so hard in the offseason to make sure he got a little bit stronger. You talk about pushing off, Mark, there's no doubt. The smile, how relaxed he was. And, and Joe Madden talking about the fact that uh, this could be something very special. You talk about getting back to 2018. What are the keys as a hitter where you took a step backwards last year, but also mainly as a pitcher and being on the mound steadily? Uh, the biggest thing I saw that smile on his face, he's healthy and, he, and he's comfortable on the mound. A little bit shorter as far as his arm throwing motion. I think that's going to allow him to be more consistent in the strike zone. For the first time out, and he hadn't thrown in such a long time, he really looked consistent yesterday. I love that velocity on his fastball. Split it really good. His slider, that's a work in progress. Still going to be solid as well. Well, how impressed was Joe Madden, who's been raving about Shohei pretty much all throughout the spring? Here's what the Angels manager had to say after yesterday's outing on the mound. His delivery, I just think it's more clean and consistent. I like his arm stroke better. Um, it starts right there, and I think after that, you're seeing he's able to recapture the velocity he's had in the past. Really good break of ball, good split. The big thing for him, the success is going to be repetition of delivery and knowing where his fastball is going consistently. If that occurs, he's really going to take off. You talk about a Joe Mann that appreciates special talent, how he's had so far with the Tampa Bay Rays, uh, with the Cubs, and then uh, you talk about talent. Jose Quintana, the Angels signed as a free agent, and we saw in the first outing, perhaps, that this guy can work himself out of jams easily. Hey, Jose, no panic at all. That's the thing I like about a veteran pitcher. We saw him over the years with the Chicago White Sox and the Chicago Cubs. He's maintained his velocity on his fastball the last four or five years, around 91.4 miles per hour. Change-up's great. Really, really good swing and miss curveball. But going back to what I saw from him, just kept himself under control, knew when he could make some pitches to get out of an inning. And when you have that ability as a veteran, that's going to help this team out. Left-handed thrower, I think he's going to be a big part of this rotation going forward because he just had to win. He's been a winner before, and he will be a winner again with the Angels. One thing the Angels were affected by in the last couple of seasons, Gooby, is the overworked bullpen. A guy like Quintana, who's done, what, seven times over 200 innings, seven times 30 or more starts. How big is he for the staff? Well, when you, when you mentioned that in the bullpen, you know when he's taking the mound, then there's a good chance that I'm not going to be worried about that fourth, fifth, and sixth inning necessarily. He's going to take the ball. He's going to find his way out because he doesn't panic. And again, it goes back to when you don't stress out there, you don't try to overthrow, you can get deeper in the ball games. You allow that bullpen to be a little more, more consistent only you have to get like nine outs out of the bullpen. Gooby, I miss seeing your face, man. <laughs> <laughs> the best I ever look, I think. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, transitioning also to the offensive side. Anthony Brandon has been slowed down just a little bit because of some stiffness. But boy, presence on the field, batter's box, and as a teammate, he's pretty special. Remember he got off to a slow start last year? He says, don't worry about me. I'm going to put up some numbers well. What, about 418 on base percentage, 151 plus as far as OPS plus. Averaging about 43 doubles per season those last three years before the shortened season last year. Such a good hitter. He makes everybody in that lineup so much better, including Mike Trout. Hey, we want contact, right, from guys like you, a sinker master like yourself. But uh, the left side of that infield with a guy like Rendon and Iglesias, how cool could that be this season? Oh, I mean, all you got to think is if I keep the ball in the ballpark, keep it on the ground, this defense is going to be outstanding, especially that left side of the infield. 
Hey, you know how I was as far as a sinker on that side of the field. I'd be happy as could be. We'd like to see some ground balls here all afternoon. It's going to be a warm one in Arizona, but Jose Quintana against Derek Rodriguez. When we come back, lineups and starting pitchers as we get back here with Angels Baseball from the Cactus League. Angels rocking from Tempe Diablo Stadium again. Jose Mora next to Mike Gubazan. Looks like a beautiful, light winded day, but Gooby, we know the importance of friendships in baseball. How great is it to watch? Buddy Black and Joe Madden together again. Oh, remember that connection back in 2002? That was a magical year for the Halos. And Buck Black, he's one of the all time greats. My former teammate in Kansas City, I learned so much from him over the years. Bruce Hines also in the conversation. Longtime angel back with the organization coaching first base. So Buddy Black's first fifth season with the Rockies. You'll have right male Tapia leading off. Speedster playing left field. First Owings, useful infielder, versatility at shortstop. Ryan McMahon will bat third. He's a third base. Former Angel C.J. Crone designated hitter. He's in camp as a non-roster player. Josh Fuentes took over the first base job last year. He's batting fifth. Sam Hilliard, always plenty of talent. Hilliard is in right field batting sixth. Elias Diaz is a catcher batting seventh. Brandon Rogers at second base, and the Rockets are very excited that he is healthy. They need him as part of their future. He's batting eighth at second base, and Garrett Hansen, also a lot of versatility, is in center field, batting ninth on the mound. Derek Rodriguez and Gooby, it's all about the man on the mound. Second start of the spring here for Jose Quintana from Colombia. Fastball is going to be about 90-94. Of the good curveball as well. Change up occasional slider. He's going to be important. And very good, consistent. 90, 83 career wins for Jose Quintana. My go-tos for him to be successful today. Get chased still in that curveball, but just a 219 career batting average versus curveball, and use that four seamer upstairs to be consistent, especially with the curveball. Jose Quintana made 21 pitches his first time out against the San Francisco Giants over at Scottsdale Stadium, and uh, he got himself into a little bit of trouble, but uh, he needed that defense, and we hope that that defense is also present for him here today, Goose. Yeah, that defense is going to be solid. You got Ligaris out. He's one of the best. The gold glove winner, John Jay out of center, Joe Adele in right field, Anthony Rendon, Franklin Barreto at shortstop, the Goslin at second base, Jerry Walsh is going to be a gold glover, in my opinion, in the future. Anthony Ben Boom behind the plate. And Anthony Rendon, one of the best. When you look at his fielding percentage over the last couple of seasons, the top, as far as especially in the National League, working his way over the American League last year for the Halos. So good, so comfortable, just like he is in the batter's box. Get comfortable in your chairs, and here we go. There's strike one from Jose Quintana. Quintana, uh, left hander, as we mentioned, limited last season because of an injury to a nerve. Um, only four outings for the Cubs. Tapia, left-handed hitter. Had a very solid season last year at 321, and he takes another one, 0-2. Well, that's a good downward action on his fastball. Real good to see that for Quintana against that lefty batter in Tapia. Using the outside part of the plate. When you do that, you open up the outer part and get a chase out of the strike zone. Way ahead. 321 hitter last year, one home run, 17 RBI for the speedster, Brian Mel Tapia, who was talked about this season, perhaps. Closing down to that zone, did he check his swing? And it looks like he went. Says uh, third base umpire. And That'll be the first out for Isaac Quintana off to a good start. That was all set up with the pitch before. Fastball on the outside part of the plate. He's got to try to protect it on that outer part. Got a breaking ball. Real good one. You got a swing and miss. Nice pitch by Jose Quintana. Take you back to Quintana. Gooby on second start of the spring. You know, maybe we'll see 40, 45 pitches here today. What should we expect in terms of maybe mix or go to a certain pitch? What did he do between the last start and this one to get himself ready on well he threw a lot more changeups that first time around right. you know his curveball is outstanding I, when you look at his percentage of changeups thrown over the last few seasons it's dropped down so i think he's going to be able to use that more and in this spot in his fastball it's going to set up his secondary pitches so well he's just trying that fastball against chris owings batting number two here owings a player that uh, body black would expect to see move around the diamond a lot buddy black has talked a lot about versatility and you got the other guy across the diamond and the other dug at him Joe Madden who preaches. He pulled hard to right center field. Joe Adele camps it. He makes a catch for out number two. Nice jump there by Joe Adele. Now, Take a look at that pitch arsenal for Quintana. Four seam fastball, about a little over 36% of curveball, 27. The sinker, 25. Change up around 11%. 
So a lot of fastballs thrown, so spotting that fastball in the right spot sets up those all-speed pitches for some swing and misses. Important outing, too, for the guy behind the plate, and Anthony Bemboom, to learn more about this veteran pitcher. And you can see a lot of the things that uh, Pintana has talked about where he wants to set up as he gets ahead here with a foul ball by Ryan McMahon, number third hitter for the Colorado Rockies. But uh, for a guy like Bemboom, the learning process with the guy who's been on the mound for so often, how big is that? Yeah, you just want to know his tendencies. You want to make sure he's working at a quick pace. And we've seen that so far just in two outings for Quintana. He doesn't like to waste time. So he wants to get that sign and get that location set up quickly. Two quick outs for Quintana against another lefty. He delivers up and in. Yeah, you remember me well, Jose. I didn't like to take time. <laughs> the more time I th it would take, the more I would think. And that's never a good situation for any pitcher on the mound. So you want to be really in a good rapport with your catcher behind the plate. Lefty locks in. Uh, there's Max pitch. There's a breaking ball, and he just taps it around the home plate area. Nine pitches so far for Quintana. You can see smooth delivery. You talk about spring training and repeating deliveries, and the guy that's been around for so long uh, certainly knows a lot about what he needs to do. And even throughout the uh, offseason, he posted a lot of videos on throwing bullpens back in Colombia and in Florida. And you look at Joe Madden and Matt Weiss are both looking at him right now. He's, he's landing in the same exact spot. He's under control. A lot of times when a pitcher tries to be too violent in his delivery, you're going to fall off towards you know, for a lefty, the third base side of the pitching rubber. Upstairs, exactly where Ben Boom had called for that pitch. And you just go back to this, Jose. Look how under control he is. And he has that toe landing great towards the target. That's what you want to do. The toe landing towards your target and arm in a perfect position. Be consistent both inside and outside part of the plate. Here comes the 2-2. Uh, and the hitter, McMahon, he bounces a breaking ball now. And that'll fill the count. On deck is former Angel C.J. Crone trying to make this team as a non-roster invitee. Where we've seen some prominent shots from C.J. Crow in the next ballpark. And you know he's going to be, if he gets a <laughs> chance at this inning or next inning, he's going to be swinging at the first pitch. We remember that real well. He is extremely aggressive on the first pitch. Local kid always uh, has a nice following. Here's a 3-2 from Quintana. It's softly left side. Foul territory. Rendon will take care of it. 12 pitches this inning for Jose Quintana as the Rockies. Go down one, two, three, and here come the Halos. Rockies on the top of the first inning as we welcome the Angels liner. Franklin Barreto is leading out the shortstop. You'll be followed by Jared Walsh, your first baseman, and then Anthony Rendon. On the mound for the Rockies, right-hander Derek Rodriguez, and he swings and misses immediately with a nice cut fastball. Here's a look at the Angels lineup. Gooby with Barreto, Walsh, Rendon, Ward getting the chance, Lagares, Adele, Goslin, John Jay, and Anthony Bamboom for Joe Madden to begin this ballgame, which is scheduled to be a seven-inning game, by the way, as we've seen throughout the spring, the many variations uh, on game length. Yeah, some five-inning games, six innings, some seven. Even the other day, eight-inning game, and they got the hit at the top of the ninth inning. So uh, it's up to the managers to make that decision, and hey, just getting that work in. Familiar name, Derek Rodriguez. He is a son of Hall of Famer Ivan Putch Rodriguez, and he quickly, with three pitches, gets rid of Frankie Barreto with a strikeout. Here for the Rockies, Ivan Rodriguez. You can see um, the many variations also that Buddy Black wants. And certain guys he wants to move around, especially, as I mentioned earlier, guys like Hanson, like Mann, and Chris Owings. Yeah, Fuente is a solid defender at first base as well. Diaz behind the play for him. Rodriguez, it's so fun to be able to see him. I remember as a youngster with Pudge, how great of an arm. We always joked around and said, hey, I wonder what would he be like if he was a closer with his arm he had behind the plate. Well, Here's his son on the mound for the Colorado Rockies. Right over the top, he's got a four-seamer, two-seamer. He'll cut the fastball as we saw against Barreto as he faces Jared Walsh here. Walsh, boy, what a sensational what, month and a half, especially September. He was absolutely on fire, and deservedly so. He has earned the job as the Angels' starting first baseman. That adjustment with his hands, Jose, has made such a big difference for him. He always hit the ball well through left center, right center, but great power. Now he's real comfortable letting that ball get a little deeper in the strike zone. He takes another one outside for Derek Rodriguez. He's got a great spin on that curveball. We saw when he came to the big leagues, Gooby, he was on fire with the Giants back in 2018 when he had a 2.81 ERA, a 6-4 record. 
things have not gone as smoothly since then. And I think getting back to a guy like Buddy Black perhaps could change his career. And, and the one thing I noticed from him, Jose, he's really, he's a very tough competitor. And I thought at times he would overthrow the baseball. And, and any pitcher, especially a young pitcher going through that, you try to throw the ball through the catcher. You try to make, every time you throw the ball, you're trying to get a swing and miss. Well, he's, he's under control here so far. And you're seeing better life on this fastball. And that's what you want to see that baseball coming out of his hands a little bit easier and not muscling up and forcing it. Bud Black used to tell me that every single time when he would sit there in the dugout, he goes, will you please not try to throw the ball as hard as you can every single pitch? Relax and hit your spots. Doobie, from anybody to you, that was a tough conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Walsh into the shift on the left side, grounds out to uh, the third baseman, I believe it was, and that is out number two. Owings, the shortstop, was actually covering his spot, so good contact going the other way by Walsh, and that'll bring up Anthony Randone. Doobie, by the way, you, you were one of my favorite visits to the mound because there's no visits. <laughs> Well, you look, he told me, you know what, get away from me. Yeah, you know, you know me, I didn't <laughs> want to waste any time. I was, I was going to throw the baseball and just, just be anywhere near to be able to make a play on the, uh, those ground balls. If I'm giving up fly balls, I'm going to have a bad day. Oh, yes, this comes Anthony Rendon, who has uh, had limited time here in the spring so far. And Rendon, not afraid to speak the truth as to why perhaps he was a little stiff. He talked about all the standing around being done in spring training, and he's not wrong. No, I, I think that's the best thing when you're seeing now more so in baseball with managers and the entire staff said get the work done and not stand around sometimes you get that we used to call the window dressing you're out there from 9 a.m till 3. well you know what you're standing around so much that only brings an opportunity to get hurt get the job done get the work done and get out of there you see more of that trend here last few years on the different organizations obviously including the angels and just uh, get out there and get the job done as uh rendon takes an 0 and 2 up and in from derek rodriguez Rod rodriguez now 28 years old he was born in Lawrenton. Texas, originally drafted by the Minnesota Twins in the sixth round back in 2011. He delivers a one-two and Rendon hits it hard left side. How about how quick those hands are? He brings his hands in. There's, he's so quiet with his approach at the play for Anthony Rendon. The hands are right there. You, see, you make the adjustments while pitches away, pitches in, up in the strike zone, below the strike zone. I've never seen anybody so under control. We always joke around about this blood pressure. He has none. It's like he's there. always as calm and cool. Skies it to the right side and chasing after his Hillier, the right fielder. He'll make the catch. 14 easy pitches for Derek Rodriguez as the Angels go down one, two, three. No score. So why this game goes on, why this is the national pastime from Tempe Diablo Stadium. No score here. Angels and Rockies, but uh, so great to know, Gooby, that baseball fans around Southern California and all of California will be welcome into their stadiums very soon. Yeah, it's great to see that from Governor Newsom to be able to say all five teams in California will be held to have fans opening day and as, as the season progresses, hopefully everything continues on that upper swing as far as everyone staying healthy. More and more fans will be able to show up. Well, there's our quote from Angels President John Carpino, who was quite happy to see that for, for the Angels, it'll be Angels Stadium capacity will begin at 20 percent then to uh, get to expand to 33 percent and eventually to 67 percent on moving from the tiers which is great for everybody and certainly for the players you can talk about players even here in spring training with limited access by fans so a place like Tempe Diablo Stadium anywhere between 1800 and 2000 fans but players are telling me it feels like there's five six thousand fans every single game yeah and, and, and players get so motivated from their fans whether they're at home their home fans or when they're on the road when you're saying some nice not so nice things to you it gets you motivated as well you remember at memorial stadium in cleveland when they have what 76 000, you have 5,000 people there it was the same thing you can actually hear every single human being at the ballpark saying something whether good or bad so it's it's great to have them back it's all about you the fans let's not forget about the cj crow now the one and two from quintana there's another breaking ball He's trying to get a feel for that breaking ball so far is uh, Quintana. We saw a lot of fastballs as the game began. He made uh, a total of what, 12 pitches in that first inning. They're all limited to only 13 games last year because of an injury with the Detroit Tigers. Hit 190, four home runs, and eight RBI. He does have some light power. Power. 
obvious. Uh, he fouls it out to the right side. And you remember a couple years ago, it seemed like when he was with the Angels, he played on every single game, every inning in spring training. I swear, I thought he was going to have 400 at-bats in spring training. There's always a designated guy like that. I recall for many seasons, uh, a guy like Crone, Cole Calhoun, when he first came up, seems like he made every yeah. trip uh, out there. And, uh, at least Arizona, you're not that far off. There's Quintana paints that inside corner, strike three, and that is strike num strike throw number three. Strike out for Jose Quintana. I'd love this pitch. Fastball, and you have a hitter that in CJ Kronick can crush a fastball. He's looking out over the plate. Then boom, sets a great target, keeps it right there, and under control in the delivery for Quintana hits the spot for a call third strike. Looking. Second outing for Jose Quintana. He's from the town of Arjona in Colombia, which is about 50 miles outside of Cartagena. And the Angels have had a connection with Cartagena, including a very popular shortstop with the name of Orlando oh. Cabrera. Gold glove. Remember he had that streak as far as getting on base for a lot of games. He was a really, really good player. Very fine player. In fact, uh, Quintana said he spoke with Orlando. As the Angels approached him about a contract, the Angels were in hot pursuit of him all throughout the offseason. Eventually found the terms and here he is Faces Josh Fuentes who really came into his own last year for the Rockies and pretty much claimed that first base job 306 average two home runs 17 RBI he is batting fifth today Boy a lot of strikes from Kitana early on using all his pitches inside outside part of the plate all speed I would imagine the 21 pitches he made in that first outing can't say enough about uh, what we saw yesterday, and you know, we're going to be seeing some of that uh, throughout this game, too, from Shohei Otani on the mound, who was absolutely electric. And Shohei immediately won 41 pitches in the first outing yesterday. And that was in Mesa against the A's. Fuentes waits. Here's another one and two, and he swings and misses that sneaky fastball, getting in by people. That is already the fourth strikeout for Jose Quintana. He's making this look good as far as our go-tos using that four-seam upstairs in the strike zone or above the strike zone. Here's a good four-seam fastball upstairs. Gets Fuentes, this swing and miss. Even though it looks good, you know this Jose is a hitter. So tough to bring your hands up and make contact. Listen, I miss a lot of those cookies, so don't use me as an example, <laughs> okay? I wish I could throw one of those up there. I was always down to that lower part of the strike zone. You know what, if he pitched today, Somebody would have told you, Gooby, I think we've got to go four seamer more. And you would have been like, huh? Yeah. What? You know, the, the crazy thing, when I was drafted <laughs> at, a, at a high school in Philly, I threw a four seam fastball and a curveball. The minute I got into camp with Kansas City, they said, you're throwing a two seamer sinker and a slider. And there it is. And if they said, hey, and clean the locker room afterwards, I would have been cleaning the locker room as well. 15 years of the show, all star. You did it all, Gooby. You did the right thing. It's Sam Hilliard, another lefty for Jose Quintana in the batter's box. Cleared in right field, talented player. Hit 210 last year in 36 games for Buddy Black, six home runs, 10 RBI. Well, if you're a young player for the Rockies right now, you're going to get plenty of opportunities to get some at bats. And that's the thing you have to, you know, not try to do too much. You realize this is a great opportunity for you. Nolan Arenado, no longer a Rocky. So now you're going to see some of these younger players. They've had a pretty good farm system over the years as far as bringing us some pretty good hitters. Here's your chance as a youngster to go out there and perform. Opportunity is there for the Rockies. They had a tough year last year. 26 and 34 pretty much matched the Angels record with Buddy Black. 17 games behind the almighty the world champion L.A. Dodgers in the NL West. Just missing outside and pounding that fast one. Very good spots here today throughout the afternoon for Jose Quintana. And the Rockies, Gooby, got off to an 11 and 3 start last year. And then came uh, early August. After early August, they won only two series. Just missing again. Quintana. There's the first base runner for the Rockies. Yes, it works. Count the walk here. Two outs. Hey, uh, Angels fans, check out the Junior Angels Kids Club. Membership includes a backpack, a T-shirt, and more for only $18. Visit angels.com slash junior angels. One thing that you and I miss about spring training is exactly that. Those kids, every single time we're doing the post games, hanging around the yeah. third base dugout, greeting us uh, as we walk around the uh, concourses, and obviously we've all made adjustments. But uh, it's always great to see and catch up with the younger fans. Ask anybody that's ever played the game of baseball. Spring training is their favorite time of the year. Great time. 
you know, you're getting your work in, but it's a, a chance because you're right there with the fans the whole time. And it, it, you get a chance to get to know the fans, and the fans, the same thing, get to know the baseball players because you literally walk right by them. You're inches away, and that's the, the smiles you get on your face from the youngsters is priceless. How many times you and I heard throughout this offseason, when can we go? Are we going to be able to watch the Angels play? And so thankful as runner goes, and he'll steal it easily. Hilliard, who's always on the good speed, steals it against Quintana and catcher Anthony Bembo. Now you pick the right pitch and then you're going on the jump going on first movement for a lefty that's what you always try to do let's go on first movement if you do that you're going to be successful i don't care what kind of arm you have behind the plate you're going to be successful and he's getting about three or four steps even before ben boom gets himself in position to try to throw that hands on the bag even though it was a high throw even the throw rail on the bag is not going to get him so he's in scoring position now for the catcher Elias diaz who is batting seventh in this lineup he's got a one-on-one -on -one count Two down, no score here on Fox Sports West. So glad you could join us. Jose Mota and Mark Gubiza. For the next four consecutive games, the Angels will have an off day on Monday. On Tuesday, then uh, obviously um, we have three games here, then the off day. Then we'll be back after the off day. I think the one thing you want to see the Angels on the pitching staff side clean up is that two out walk. We've seen that a number of times already in spring. And it had, a, it had happened a lot last year as well. Ground foul left side for Elias Diaz. 2-2 two, two now, 31 pitches for Jose Quintana. Against the Rocket in his career, 21 career games, 19 starts. In regular season, 7-5 with a very good 2.74 ERA. And 125 innings pitched, 99 strikeouts. Last time he faced the Rockies in the regular season, Mark, got to go back to 2017. Quintana quite familiar with Joe Madden. He was with the Cubs from 17 through 19 with Joe as he goes upstairs and got a part of the bat and that will be strike number three for the catcher. So five strikeouts now for Jose Quintana is the Rocky Strand a batter. No score. Stadium and uh, the correction on my side is uh, Jose Quintana, four strikeouts, one walk. Rockies strand a runner at second base after the two-out walk, and the Angels come to hit for the second time with Taylor Ward. Batting from the right side, Juan Lagares and Joe Adele. Down to left side, close to that line, a long throw from third base, and close play, but Ward is retired by Ryan McMahon. Nice play. And there's no doubt, anytime we see anything hit on the left side for a Rocky defender, we're going to talk about the guy they had there, Nolan Arenado. Can you imagine it, it, your young player or getting a chance to be able to play a third base position? It's like following Brooks Robinson in, in Baltimore. I mean, Nolan Arenado is arguably one of the best third basemen's ever fielding. Uh, it's phenomenal. So every play is going to be looked at as a fan going, was that as good as Nolan Arenado? Well, no one's as good as Nolan no, Arenado. Anthony Rendon close. I'll tell you what, he is phenomenal at third base, and he's going to really help out that Cardinal club. I mean, that Cardinal club all of a sudden now, the big-time favorites in the NL Central. You're not kidding. Rodriguez delivers to Juan Lagares. Lagares has had a very good spring. Right-handed batter. He's covered some ground in center field. He's run the bases well. He's got some stolen bases. Nice running fastball, got enough of that plate inside, called by umpire Pat Holberg. Rodriguez retired the Angels in order in that first inning. Here's a one-two, breaking ball hit hard. Right past the shortstop, diving to his right orange, cannot come up with it, and Lagares continues his hot hitting here in the spring. We know how good he is in the outfield. He's one of the best gold glove winner, but he's showing some pretty good ability at the plate as well. Hitting the ball in the all fields, running the base as well. That's a wide open spot, that fourth or potential fifth spot in the outfield here for the Angels. And he's really showing a lot here. I remember when they picked him up, I'm thinking, now all of a sudden you got some solid defense. That's something they needed to address this offseason, the Angels. There was a lot of mistakes in the outfield. Lagares is one of the all timers already at center field. He can go get a baseball and his good throwing arm as well. Adele skies it to deep left field. Going back is Tapia, and looking over the berm, Adios! Joe Adele connects. 
And quickly gives the end to the 2 nothing lead here in the second inning. No doubter. Wow. You're talking about crushing a baseball long, low way. Yeah, I'm going to grab my helmet like that, too, and go, wow, look how far that went. That's good to see from Joe. You know he's trying. He's working so hard, whether in the field or in the batter's box. He's hit some baseballs hard early on, but they get that first hit like this and going a long way. Fastball hard in the plate. Joe Dell with that good lift on it as well. He knew it, and you should take a time to look at that baseball, how far that went. That's a good sign for Joe Adele, who has been getting his walks. He has struggled the strikeout, but uh, he is getting the reps. And we know one thing, he is putting that work in. So that's already the second home run allowed by Derek Rodriguez here in spring training as he faces Phil Goslin and quickly has him on an 0-2 count. Boy, what a great feeling. Get that, that get that hit out of the way. Found off the bat, too. Right away, you just knew that baseball was tattooed a long, long way for Joe Adele. Gosselin from the right side. He takes his slider away from Derek Rodriguez. Rodriguez had made one start. He won two innings. His first time out allowed four hits on two runs, including, as I mentioned, that home run, one strikeout. Angels a 2-0 lead here in the second inning. It's a fastball ride by Gosselin. That is out number two. Well, he didn't go back to that swing for Joe Adele. It's just good to see. He, he has a lot of confidence. He talked about that with Brandon Marsh. They worked on a lot during the offseason. Things he needed to work on, he, he got humbled, what happened. I mean, he got rushed up there, to be honest yes. with you. Jose. We talked about that last year. But the need for him to be that player that we expected to be, it was tough for him. And now you're seeing a swing like that could really propel him to be a star-type player that we think eventually is going to be in the future. John Jay has been one of those players, veteran players, who is obviously easy target for Joe Adele to go out there and talk to. Uh, Dexter Fowler, those are great presence in the clubhouse, great mentor to young players. And Jay, a late signee by the Angels as a non-roster player. Limited to time with the D-backs last year, 18 games, and trying to make this ball club. Hit hard, and Tapia still going back. The win is carrying against the wall. And John Jay will not stop. He'll be settling in at uh, third base with a standout triple. That's what I call good base running right out of the box. Yeah, he's thinking, you know what? I'm, I'm not even going to settle for a double. I'm going to think triple. And it was great base running. He's always had good speed. And it's got a fastball out over the plate. This lifts it up. The baseball is carrying as usual. You would see out here in Arizona off the wall. And he sees he cruises in for a triple. He's thinking maybe inside the parker there for a second. Great job. Brian Butterfield, third base coach. Bruce Hines, Jeter, coaching first base. And that has been stress on these players. Out of the box. Fundamentals. Yes. It has to be taught. And it has to be in, you know, embedded in their minds. That's how you win games. You look at the Dodgers win the World Series last year, fundamentally. I think Mookie Betts being there really <laughs> yeah. helped them out. But everyone was better because, you know what, you can't give up a base. You can't allow, uh, give up a run in the field as well, give an extra out. you got to do all the things right to be able to win in this game. This gets away from Diaz and Ben Boom with a very comfortable 2-0 count, betting nine for the Angels. On deck is the top of the order in Franklin Barreto. John Jay, that's his first triple he's had since 2018 in September for John Jay. Got to feel good for him, too. He has been uh, trying to get his rhythm going and find better contact than he does there. Skied it to the right place with Diamond. Also hit hard. And deep to right center field playable. And the center fielder, Hampson, will stay with it for third out. But the Angels with one loud sound booby. You hear it? What a swing. I hear it, Jose. That's, and I, I still can't see where it landed. That ball was crushed by Joe Adele. Top of the third inning, after a solid outing by Jose Quintana, he gives way to Angels' new closer, Rysel Iglesias, who is making his second appearance here of the spring. And, Gooby, there's no doubt Joe Batten could not hide his 
happiness and having a guy like this because he's so much across the diamond on the mound against the Cubs for so many years. Yeah, yeah, we saw him and he's got a power arm. His fastball average, fastball velocity, 96.2 miles per hour. Also through a slider and the electric changeup that he goes to as far as getting his swing and miss with. Ryan Sel Iglesias gave up a home run his first time up. And Joe Madden said, well, that's a pop-up. That's pretty much an Arizona-type home run, and it was to the opposite field. As he delivers a nice fastball to first hitter for the Rockies, Brendan Rodgers, this youngster, last season limited to only 21 at-bats. Seven games. And so far, so good for him here in the spring, but they need him on the field because he is a premier talent as Jose Quintana. Continues his work after only 32 pitches in this game. I always remember that. It's fun when you throw that full bed session after you have a really good outing like that. It used to be where you threw your game. You remember seeing this when pitchers are running the outfield, get their work in. But you know you do have a good game when you go to the bullpen after that and still work on some extra pitches. What was that like? I mean, say for you, early in your career, how many innings was typical for you the first time out? Three innings. Three innings. Always. Always three innings, and then it went to four innings, five innings. By the end of spring, I was hoping to get to seven, maybe even eight innings before I went north and go to that cold weather. Swing and a miss. That is that nasty stuff. Filmed by Raisel Iglesias. That's one out. The number eight hitter, Rogers goes down, and that'll bring up Garrett Hampson. So it wasn't so much pitches. It was innings. Yeah, it was innings. I, you know, it never really we talked about how many pitches you threw in the innings you were going to get in no matter what. Wow, what was this here? Let me check that it's out. It's a good all speed. That's a changeup, yeah. splitter type changeup he gets. You see that look from a hitter. You know, the first pitch he threw was almost like that, that sound of Joe Adele off the bat. They would pop that fastball in right down the middle of the plate. So Jose Quintana, two innings, and did not allow a hit. Four strikeouts, one walk, 32 pitches. I say Iglesias, one thing that he does have in his <laughs> personality is he likes to work fast. And for a closer, you don't see that very often. No, usually they, they take their time. Yes, they, they, do. they want to intimidate the hitters. But you know, when you're throwing an average fastball over 96, you're already intimidating every hitter you see. One attempt left side foul for Hampson. 234 hitter last year, five home runs, 11 RBI. Here's another thing about um, closer that you don't see very often is he is working here from a wind-up position. Even though he's kind of laterally positioned, you see his feet. In a modified stretch position, you'll see you know, a number of pitchers do that, even though Syndergaard would do the same type of thing. And now look, look at his left foot where it is compared to his right foot. Let's take a closer look again, because you don't see that very often either, especially when these modified versions, as you mentioned, from the stretch. The big thing for him, and when you see this, you want to be able to get that hip turn. And that's why he starts it out, brings it up, and he's got a real good hip turn as far as falling down there towards that home plate area. It's very important for him for balance. Hit high, short center field, left center field. Lagares, the gold glover, takes charge. That's two outs. And you're you know, the third. As an infielder, you're, you're loving to hear that. Someone out there calling that off and said, I got it, I got it. Whenever you hear I got it, that's a good day. <laughs> Especially when there's no, <laughs> no clouds in the sky and it's hot. And that bright sun. Yeah, remember all those years going down to spring training? We oh, watched them work on those pop-up oh, drills. <laughs> Watching all the guys and trying to catch everything from the outfielders, the infielders, and I'm thinking, oh, I, I wish I had my, you know, they said, don't videotape that, but I love to have my phone to be able to see those guys making those routes, trying to get those pop-ups. Top of the order again at Rymel Tapia. He swings and misses at the offerings from strike throwing machine, Rysel Iglesias. He is from Cuba. Tapia from Dominican Republic. Doesn't waste any time. He hits it to short left field. Agatas again will make the catch and 12 pitches, one, two, three. For Iglesias, the Rockies go down. Angels lead to nothing. Merit. With the fans in attendance, obviously with the protocol being uh, taken place and all throughout baseball, Gooby, it's great to see these fans in, in the stands and abiding with the protocols, wearing their masks, the distancing. And it was great to hear again the fact that for the opener at the Big A against the White Sox, fans will be allowed.
a limited we always capacity. we always love the opener but to have the fans back now it's gonna be extra special this season coming in there the big a against the white Sox, a really good team themselves but there's a lot of young talent on that club and Lucas Giolito will probably get that opening day star for the White Sox. Not sure yet for the Angels, but there's some choices now for Joe Madden is going forward, especially Quintana. What a job today. Outstanding job for Jose Quintana. The Angels definitely will go with a six-man rotation. Joe Madden pretty much saying the kids' gloves are off. Shohei Otani. No scheduled Otani Sundays is pretty much where the team needs him, and it's the right thing. Yeah, it's about a team and a special talent like Shohei Otani and you know the communication level too between Joe Perry Menage and now first year with the Angels as general manager players are raving about the fact that it's an open door policy. Yeah, and, and that the communication is so important in, in any business and baseball is a business and it's success for this club is going to be that communication between the players in the front office and of course in that bench there for Joe Madden and his coaching staff. Loretta retired to center field. Well, we were talking about Jared Walsh and the adjustments Jose what he did with his hands last year, why he was so effective. You see his hands quiet, almost like an Anthony Rendon, quiet hands, and there's not a lot of movement going through as he catches that baseball out in front. Remember before, he would get down and bring it down more. When, you, when you're on the mound as a pitcher, you see a, a, a hitter with a lot of movement in the hands. You know, in your mind, I can get him with a fastball inside. And then once I get him aware of that, then I can get him to chase on all speed out of the strike zone. Hit hard right field. Just like Gooey predicted it. Those hands doing all the work for Jared Walsh. He's one for two. And Walsh came into this game. Having gone one for five in the spring. I think we sent a text message to Jared Walsh. Say, hey, listen, we're going to talk about how quick your hands are in that position. You did a good swing, and he did right away. You were face into the right field. Fluid swing there for Jared Walsh. And beyond that, one thing he was telling me is, you know, to clean up his front side overall because yeah. he did the, the lie, the leg kick, a lot of movement. And he says, watching Albert and watching Trout, just the visuals was help enough for me to go out there and believe in the adjustment. How great is that if you're a young hitter and you'd be able to watch guys like Mike Trout, Albert Pulls, Anthony Rendon swing the bat? You can only get better. That's why I think Joe Adele in these environments, he's getting quite a few at-bats in there, and that was a mammoth home run he hit. That's how you get better, just watching. Sometimes you get so caught up in all the information you're given, but the best information you can get sometimes, especially as a hitter, is looking those guys, those veterans, at the plate, see what they're doing with their hands. Rendon hits it high. Left side, Tapia this time under control. We think the sun, the problem, and he makes a catch. Nice play there by Rymel Tapia. He's had some issues out there with that sun pretty much all afternoon. And Rendon retired for the second time, and that'll bring up Tyler Ward. Adele coming into this game. Gooby was all for six in the spring. But he had mixed four walks, which is very encouraging. Taylor Ward really you talk about a, a difference maker in, in a young player's mentality last year. Joe Madden and what he did to the mentality of Taylor Ward. Yeah, you remember the huh? war was all about lifting the baseball, trying yes. to hit home runs. Well, you, you know, certain guys are home run hitters. Taylor Ward is not a home run hitter. He's a he's a line drive hitter. Very great athlete. Guys. Yes, he can play a lot of positions. Now he's playing the catching position where he was drafted. He can play the outfield. He can play the infield. In, in a Joe Madden world, that we've seen that even for all the success in Tampa and in Chicago, you need players that can play a number of different positions. Snap throw by Diaz almost gets Walsh. And you know, a lot of young players, you and I know very well, sometimes get offended. As we take another look here to Walsh, she is getting back under the tag of Fuentes. But as a young player nowadays, the game has changed. You better be a stud. I mean, Ellen Dorr type player, a Korea type player, among others, mm -hmm. to say, well, you know what? I don't really want to play one position. That's my option. Well, it's not your option anymore. No, you better look be able to play like, a number of positions. Look at a guy like Javi Baez. Yeah. Huh? Second base, shortstop, and third play, base. And he'll play like a gold glove yeah. anywhere. Oh, I love him, by the way. He's, he's one of my favorite players in the game. Great power he has, too, but when you can play so well in those different positions defensively and, and give yourself a chance to win a game with your glove as well as your bat, it's very important. 2-1 Ward Angels with a minute first base. Hit hard. 
right on the third baseman. Like Matt will retire. Orders the Angels strand with a base runner. Three full innings. Two nothing Angels. A new arm for the Angels on the mound. We're talking about the projected rotation, and so far everybody's healthy and everybody has looked pretty good. Going with a six-man rotation, and, and they've all been into that. They've all thrown the ball very well. Alex Cobb, Jim Palmer told me the minute the Angels picked him up, because you're going to really like him. He's got a devastating splitter, nasty little running fastball. Gets a lot of ground ball. Actually, Shohei Otani, excellent yesterday. Jose Quintana, what a job here today. Dylan Bundy still looks like the dominant pitcher we saw last season as well. So there's some depth. Andrew Heaney throwing the ball well. I love what he did during the offseason. Rob Soto looking at this changeup because we always talked about that Jose fastball slider same speed the changeup changes speed is going to make him that much better well it wasn't the changeup Gooby but it was a cut fastball that made Mike Myers a key piece of the Angels bullpen last year boy what a season for the righty and he is now on the mound coming in after Angels closer Rice and Iglesias and on one pitch He's got the deep left field. The ball's carrying Lagares into the corner, and this one will hit the pole. And that'll be a home run for Chris Owings. Oh, the sky shot there by Owings, who had been 0 for 1, and that puts the Rockies on the board. It's now 2 to 1 Angels. Yeah, you get a baseball hit it up in the air at all today. The baseball is carrying very, very well. That's why when you look at numbers for pitchers, in Arizona, in the Cactus League, you just don't worry about the numbers. You look at location, stuff as far as velocity, some break on the break of balls, but anything hit in the air is going to be a difficult one to keep in the ballpark. Myers will face Ryan McMahon, who flew out to the third baseman. Rendon in foul territory the first time up. Angels third pitcher of the afternoon. Second outing for Myers. He went one inning last time out. Gave like a couple of hits and two strikeouts. Missing inside and talk about the access now to the internet, Instagram, and so many other ways. But Mike Myers said, I found something I learned about my cutter on social media and applied it. And, 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 and a cutter is one of those things too. You think fastball, that last second, and sometimes it, even where you hold it or grip the baseball, like the changeup, the cutter is the same thing. It's all about that comfort for you. Just a little offset as far as the seams of the baseball. That's how you get that cut action. And he had a September like a Dennis Eckersley did when we saw all those fantastic years with Oakland, where there was anybody on base, a lot of strikeouts and a lot of swing and misses, not a lot of hard contact against them. This is here. All we're talking about Shohei Otani and his outing yesterday. Gooby, this was electric. That stretch position under control, getting that arm up and quick in a good arm slot right away. Life off the fastball, touched 100 miles an hour. It was pretty consistent around that 99 mile an hour mark. Five strikeouts in an inning and two thirds. Did give up a couple hits and eventually a run, but for the most part, threw the ball exceptionally well. Thing I loved about that big smile we had on his face after he walked off the mound. CJ Crone, the batter for the Rockies, who struck out looking against Quintana on a fastball in. Uh, first time up. McMahon at first, Angels leading 2-1. to one. There's a cut fastball, misses away. One thing about playing loose, and, and Joe Mountain talked about this, is but Shohei Otani, you can tell how relaxed he was because sometimes in between pitchers, he's flipping the ball in his hand. Gooby, you were a pitcher. And you can really talk about this a little bit more, but Joe says that's my indicator that he was calm out there. When you're relaxed and you're smiling and have a good time, your muscles are relaxed, and that allows you to do anything on the mound better or at the plate. The more tense you are, the more uptight you are, the less flexibility you have in the muscles to be able to get the job done. That, that foot, that, I watched a couple pictures of him from the side. He really drives towards home plate. He's getting that extension in there, too, and having some fun. <laughs> exactly. I would probably drop the ball if I did that, though. It hard right at Myers, right off his glove, and into short right field. A bullet off the bat of C.J. Krohn. The runner, McMahon, will make it all the way to third base, and we're hoping that Myers is okay. Boy, the sound and the velocity off that barrel, absolutely amazing. Well, 
bit a closer look as to where the ball got him. Oh. Almost looked like he got the, his thigh into the glove. And the foul through. Maybe just touch the glove. But you're, all you hope for, you work so hard in spring training. That might have got part of his leg as well. That's what it appears like. And with the Angels medical staff, athletic trainers out there, Joe Madden, a close look. They want to make sure he's okay as he throws a few pitches here. Have to go back maybe and try to freeze that shot to see exactly where it got him. But Boy, that's a scare, and I know you faced that many times, including one time when Paul Molitor. Yeah, broke my leg on the line drive back up the middle. So, yeah, that, it's, you work, especially in spring training, you work so hard as far as those comebackers hit at you, and they hit hard at you as well. He saw the reaction. At least he was trying to get that glove down there, but it looked like it got his leg well as well. So he's got first and third now. The Angels 2-1 lead here in the fourth inning. And the batter's Josh Fuentes, one of the Rockies' best hitters last season. In left side, fair ball inside the line and into the left field corner. That battle will tie the game. Lagares would choose a ball behind that bullpen. And the runner coming on. Crohn's coming on. Here's a throw, and that'll be late. And the Rockies take the lead here. Three to two and a two-run double by Josh Fuentes. Seeing some early aggressive first pitch swinging against Myers here for Colorado, and they're not they're not missing those opportunities. Anytime you see a pitcher get hit like that, you're you, as a hitter, you're going to be swinging early because you're you're just trying to get a feel. You still kind of feel. You so know, let, you get the heart is beating so, extra hard. Let me stop you there. That is good for the hitter. What does it do to even your your mentality, your your sequence of thinking huh. that perhaps doesn't get you to where you want to be? Yeah, you, you <laughs> almost recoil because you're worried about something hit right back at you, mm. and that's the thing. It, it worries you. You mentioned that line drive for Paul Molitor. Literally, it breaks my leg. And the next pitch I throw, I'm with the Angels at that point, and the first pitch I throw, a line drive right back at me, almost the exact same spot. So so my mind but, but, after that, I said, you know what? I'm throwing nothing but inside fastballs. I don't care if I hit a hitter at that point because they're comfortable looking out over the plate. Let's uh, reconstruct the story. You get hit by a line drive. Yeah. You stay in the game. No, no, no I'm, I'm done. I'm, You're I'm, done. I'm in the cast for 12 weeks after wow, that. Wow, okay, yeah. so it was immediately out of the game. The next year. The next year. For, I mean, it's, it's Glanville. Doug Glanville. Doug Glanville oh, for oh. the Cubs. First pitch I throw, line drive, right back up the middle. And I'm thinking, why did I make a comeback? Why did I even? <laughs> I should have kept my cast on my leg the whole time. Well, the Rockies take the lead here in 3-2 in the fourth inning as Myers has struggled here so far. First batter he faced, Chris Owings hit the home run, then he walked... McMahon and Krohn hit a ball right off of his leg, would believe at this point. And a double by Fuentes, so he has not retired a Rocky yet. This is upstairs against Hilliard, who walked and stole a base against Quintana back in the second inning. I think always keep in mind. As far as in the cactus, like Jose, you have a tendency not to have the, the crisp break on your break a ball or cutter. Another hard hit ball to center field. Jay will cut it off, and the runner Fuentes will make it four to two, Colorado here in the fourth inning. Well, thank you, Angels fans, for 60 years of support. We'll be celebrating the 60th anniversary of Angels baseball all season long. Visit angels.com slash 60 for more information. Gooby, we are in for a treat with so many legends, so many names, so many contributors to the Angels in this 60th anniversary. When you look back at how many incredible players have put on that Angel uniform, it's going to be a lot of fun to reminisce about that. Pitching change, Myers is done. Now 4-2 Colorado, and we'll be back with Lou Herler on the mound for the Halos. Please. The Angels as they trail now 4-2 here in the fourth inning. Ben Rowan in 2019, double A and triple A in 40 games, seven starts, a 5-3 record, 3.61 ERA. Side armor, who did not pitch last season. There's, there's a story of so many players, obviously, that missed the uh, minor league season. More of a sinker slider type pitcher. 
from that arm angle, tries to work that ball down, gets a ground ball, soft contact towards the end of the bat, but a lot of sliders thrown from him as well. 6'4", 200-pounder. He is from Dunedin, Florida. And he inherits a runner first base out of Sam Hilliard, or the Rockies, having scored four times so far here in this fourth inning. Dunedin, Florida, that's where the Jays are at. That's where they're going to play their home games, the home schedule, at least the beginning part of the season for a very talented Toronto club. Oh, they have a young team. How about Vlad Jr., how much <laughs> weight he lost? What, 42 pounds yes. during the offseason? It's great to see. He's going to, I think he's going to have a huge year for the Jays. Booby, let's put it this way. For Vlad Jr., it was time. Yeah. It, it was time. As Rowan ties up the hitter, Diaz, who cannot hold the swing. Yeah, the count 0 1. So George Springer over there as well. That Jays team is really, really good. A lot of young talent. If anything could hold them back is starting pitching, where there's a lot of questions so far. You could say that about every team, but a lot of teams in the American League. You look at pitching staffs in the National League, it's a little bit different. In the American League, there's not many starting staffs that are extremely deep right now. So health is going to be the big thing. We're all missing outside, and we cannot uh, talk about Vlad Jr. and not talk about our number 27 Angels in the Hall of Famer, Vlad Guerrero. Yeah, I hope we get to see him during this celebration of the 60th anniversary for the Angels. I'm sure we will. That smile. I was joking around about Dexter Fowler has a great smile. Vlad smile, though. Wow. He'll light up the stadium. Yeah. Not the room. He'll light up the stadium with that smile. Oh, yeah. Very, very special player. Very special person who follows the Angels daily back from the Dominican Republic. How about a scouting report to pitch against him? Where do you throw the ball? <laughs> well, I can't throw the ball in the dirt because I'll hit it hard. I can't throw it over his head. He'll hit it hard. If I throw it down the middle, he might hit a line drive back at me. So uh, what am I going to do? I don't want to get the ground ball foul. Exactly what he wants to do here and try to get the Angels to stop the bleeding here against the Rockies. Rockies came into this game with a 2-2 two and two record, one tie. The Angels came into this game with a 3-2 and two record, also one tie. We remind you again, this game today scheduled for seven innings. And we're not complaining. No. Are you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I might have a chance to get a few CGs that way. <laughs> And the most important thing in this outing here for Mike Myers is that he's going to be healthy coming out of it, hopefully after that line drive back up the middle for him. Yes, I know that the medical staff is quite busy taking care of him right now. Because that baseball was squared up very well by C.J. Crone right back up the middle. When you release the baseball as a pitcher, you're basically 50 feet away. And we talk so much about exit velocity, you're talking over 100 miles an hour, it's really hard to react. You, most times you're just hoping it gets by you. And that's why I would set you up behind me, Jose, to make the play. I get out of the way and let you make the play well, on the ground ball. I made a lot of plays behind you in spring training. <laughs> I was that guy that was playing a lot from the sixth inning on. Diaz hits it hard in the gap left center field. Lagar is chasing it. This ball will go against the fence above that wall and scoring easily from first base is Hilliard on another hard hit of all the Rockies here in this fourth inning. Now they lead five to two. Yeah, that didn't miss going out for a home run by much at, at all. Tried to run that fastball upstairs. And when you're a, a pitcher, you know, like Rowan, it's tough to be able to get out upper part of the strike zone. I know that's what you see that a lot from pitchers, but he was able to bring his hand up the as he pushed that ball to the left center. Yeah, you can see the ground rules here at Tempe Diablo Stadium with that chain leg fence above the padded ball is still in play. Boy, Gooby, I know you were uh, obviously with Angels, but there was a time in which that fence created so many confused situations. Is it in play? Is it not in play? Even Mike Sochi used to say, hey, let's just clear things up here. The ball carries well here. Let's just make it over both walls just to yeah. make sure that there's no questioning. What, where did it hit? Did it hit the top of the padded or did it hit the chain link fence? So as he saw that, the ball hit the chain link fence and still in play. Still going back to that pitch by Rowan, when you're a sinker ball, a slider guy, to try to elevate a fastball, you better get it well above the hands or it's going to be trouble. So it's right, Davin Barrero, long throw and way offline. And nice pick over there, first base by Walsh. So that'll be another base hit for the Rockies. Rockies now one for two. 
It's almost a pretty good range, Moreno, on that one to be able to get to that baseball. But a smart move by Walsh. That's why he's such a gifted first baseman. He knows he's not going to be able to try to stretch out and make that play. The ball could get by him, so he got off the bag to prevent that ball from getting away. You're still a double play in order now because of that play by Jared Walsh at first. And that is a play that you learn by reps and mistakes. As you see a lot of young first basemen stay anchored to the base, and that ball gets by. That's another run and another man in scoring position. So good job there by Walsh as a runner. Diaz stays at second base. And that'll bring up the number nine hitter, Garrett Hampson. Rowan, second pitcher for the Angels this inning. Again, hoping for a healthy overall outing for Mike Myers, who struggled near this fourth inning. The Angels got on the board in the second inning. Thanks to a mammoth blast by Joe Adele, his first hit of the spring back in the second inning, a two-run shot. Two really good outings today earlier, though, by Jose Catana and Iglesias as well. Use all their pitches, spot a fastball as well, secondary pitches. But right there, Joe Adele had to feel real good about that. You can just see just the movement out in the outfield. You're ready for anything hit your way now. You're not worried about, you know, taking your at bat into the field. That's what's really important for a young player. You don't want to let that happen to you. And it happens a lot because you're trying to do something at the plate. Then all of a sudden, in your mind, you're playing, what was I doing wrong at the plate? And, and the baseball gets on you quickly in the outfield. Booby, it happens to veteran players. Well, think about a young man who came up to the big leagues. Like Adele. Under the circumstances last year, Angels struggling. They call him up. He's in the lineup right away. And the struggles were obvious. And the fact is, we all know he needs more time playing baseball. Yeah. He does. And, uh, you know, I just love watching that stuff, that communication. Yes. Where he's going to be, where, what, what, what should I look for off the bat? That's that veteran out there in John Jay telling him what to look for. Because John Jay's played a lot in a lot of outfield positions, and he knows how to play them well. But we're going back to it. When you have a bad at bat or you're struggling to play, you take that out to the field. You mentioned veterans do the same thing because you're sitting out there, what am I doing, what am I doing as far as my hands? But I love that, that communication. That's how you get better. That is how you become the player we all expect Joe Adele to be. I think uh, John Jay's saying, what was that pitch? Hmm. I know. I, I, I think Adele asked him, hey, what was that pitch? You got the better <laughs> view in center field. We know it might draw it all the time because we get that perfect view of him. Yeah. He's looking like, he's looking in like, where was that pitch at? <laughs> it's a full count, first and second for the Rockies. They lead 5-2 here in this fourth inning. Then again, Jose, every pitch I threw, I was like, where's that pitch at? Uh, I know. <laughs> I, I lived it, and that'll be a ball four. Bases loaded now for the Rockies. And boy, they have pretty much put a pounding and issued a... Seen a lot of patience from them. Second walk of the inning, third of the afternoon for the Angels. Again, good reminder that managers have the option of flipping innings. Under these circumstances here with the plan under uh, what we have right now, this protocol and different rules, Tapia softly the second, and the only play will be a first base. He's eliminated, but uh, Diaz scores another run for the Rockies. It's now 6-2. RBI for Tapia, he's over 3, and the Rockies continue to add on little by little. One thing we haven't we seen from Joe Madden, he has not done that yet as far as taking the team off the field after a certain amount of pitches, over 20 for a pitcher. Although it's happened a couple times against the Angels on the offensive side where they had some big innings going on. But this is an opportunity now to bring the infield in and to work on these things in spring training with the score 6-2. to two, You're still, this is a reactionary time for the infielders with the infield in and see how they can get a ground ball. Always has hit it hard every single time up. He homer last time, and for the second time this inning, he'll be driving in a run. Well, the homer now with a sack fly, and that'll make it 7-2, Rockies. Good situational hitting by Chris Owings, batting for the second time this inning. And the Rockies have put up a seven spot here in the fourth inning. And Rowan, we, we talked about him being a sidearm, but he's thrown over the top as well. 
as far as his, his throwing motion. That's not easy to do. You, know, you're, you throw from that three quarters, deliver your side armor, and then all of a sudden you throw from right over the top. Now, I've seen that happen with certain guys that are side armors, but to throw a certain pitch overhand, which really tipped it, right? Yep. Not sure there that was the case the, here. There it is for the side. You know, occasionally we would do this. We, David Cohn was a really good major league pitcher where, you know, you're over the top, over the top, and you throw a side armor just to run a fastball in, something different. But if you're a hitter and you see a pitcher like Rowan over the top like that, you would think that means he's going to try to go with a four-seam fastball upstairs. You would think it's a hitter, and that's how you react to it. For the second time this hitting, Ryan McMahon, who walked and scored earlier, against Mike Myers he is all for one left-handed batter man at third that's a pretty good pitch again so let's see what we have so far Mr. Rowan on the mound and there's that sidearm delivery run that fastball inner part of the plate and then here same thing over the top and it was more a of a breaking ball exactly so the curveball from over the top more of a 12 to 6 break sinker slider from the three quarters submarine style so let's hit the center field jay with a little bit of trouble and the veteran recovers to make the catch and a very tough hitting for the angels after three and a half seven two rockies i'm draymond green with my well the rockies scored seven times in that top of the fourth inning from tempe diablo stadium as the fans are so happy to be out watching baseball, watching their angels, and enjoying Cactus League baseball all throughout the valley. And one thing that obviously is happening in spring training in Florida, which thankfully is not happening in Arizona, but is regionalized now where teams on the west side or east side of Florida have to play against each other a whole lot. And because of the convenience and travel in Arizona, that's not the case here. Yeah, and it travels so much different. Oh. You know that from Florida <laughs> compared to Arizona. And there were some bus trips or three and a half, four hour bus trips, I remember, in spring training. And that was never fun. So this way you keep a lot of teams with whatever that regional, as far as you see like the Twins and the Red Sox will be playing each other because they're both share the same site down there in Fort Myers like every other day. So Derek Rodriguez is down on the line and he'll get into Jensi Almonte. Monte is a big piece of this bullpen for the Rockies. Hard thrower as Lagares continues his hot hitting and breaks his bat, but it doesn't matter. It's a base hit to center field. Boy, who can stop him? That'll bring up Joe Adele, and if you didn't see it, this is what he missed. Uh, that's what you, when you get a mistake fastball like that, that's what you want to see a hitter jump on it. And Adele jumped on it. That went way out for a home run for Joe Adele. Good feeling for him to be able to have that type of swing. Hopefully that carries into this at bat now. First hit of the spring for Joe Adele. Last season, he struggled. 161 average with three home runs. Takes a breaking ball away from Yancy Almonte, who last season tried for fourth in the National League in appearances to relief innings. 27 and two-thirds relief innings. 2.93 ERA in 24 appearances. And he's a guy that can go multiple innings out there for Buddy Black. Well, he's got a, delivers he's a breaking got, ball outside. He's got a real good fastball, 93 to 98 range. He has a real good slider. We saw a couple sliders in a row. Through about 45% of his pitches last year, sliders. And it's a nasty late break to it and also a changeup. Acquired by the Rockies from the Chicago White Sox for Tommy Canley back in 2015. Yes, he went. So his first base umpire. That's a young hitter getting aggressive on a 2-0 count. I think he's getting a fastball, but that was a running fastball, a little bit out of the strike, so put hold off on the swing. We'll be getting a what? 2-0 fastball, after which that, is after that shot? <laughs> oh, they went right upstairs, and that is where big league pitchers have tried to get just over that pitch sometimes from Joe Adele. Well, you go back to that swing of that home run, it was able to lift the ball up. So when you see that as a pitcher, you're going to try to elevate an upper quadrant of the strike zone with fastballs. See if he can make that adjustment, keep his hands level. Going back upstairs. By the way, Lagaris is incredible. Every time you look up, he's got a base hit. He's got stolen bases, or three stolen bases also. MVP of the Caribbean Series, which was played in Mazatlan. 
Yeah, some nice tight slides. That was a great take by Joe Adele, by the way. Two really good takes. That high fastball, something he would chase last year, and that breaker ball right there, late life on the slider, and he still didn't chase it. Good at bat. Home run's great, but that type of at bat by Joe Adele is really important for him. Already his fifth walk of the spring. And that'll bring up Phil Gosselin, who struck out swinging the first time up. Right handed batter. Former Phil. And to my left here in our SoCal set, Philadelphia plays big. <laughs> With my man Gooby. Yeah. Fightings. I, I better just always talk about my best experiences in Philly. You know what one of my best experiences in Philly was? A cheesesteak sandwich? <laughs> That's one of them. I thought it, I heard somebody it, in the background it, say, leave it. That's just not right. Gooby, it, it wasn't me, by the way. <laughs> it was that until we got to go with the Angels and Mike Trout played in Philadelphia. You recall that moment? Yes. Yeah, I, I called oh, the Oh, my pal. goodness. Every time he came to the plate, they were standing. And Millville you, was there. Yeah. Pretty you, much. And usually, it doesn't matter who it is. If you're an, a, an opponent of a Philadelphia team, they're booing you. They don't care who you are. And we all know about the, the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus over the years getting <laughs> food. But Mike Trout, every time he came to the plate, you know, I went to uh, a number of football games at the at the link with Mike Trout. It's amazing how many of those football players are the Eagles who would literally go up and talk to Trotty as they're running out on the field. I'm thinking, wait a minute, you guys are about ready to kill each other on the field, but you still found time to talk to Trotty on the way out to the field. He is the best in the game. He is a phenomena. Here's a 2 0 to Goslin. It's softly short left center field. Tapia seems like he's got a beat on it, and he does. And that's out number one. Well, that's a running fastball right in on the hands of Goslin. But I, I can't say enough, Gooby, about that Nine, moment because the kid from Millville returned home, and everybody from Millville, I mean, buses. Yeah. I don't recall talking to. The dentist, the barber, the school principal, you name it. And it was just a, such a pure celebration of one of their guys. Yeah. And who better than our number 27? Yeah. When as you, humble as you he look is. back how many players, baseball players, come out of that area, not, not a lot. And it's not like it's in Southern California where you have so many, or Texas or Florida. Not many baseball players come out from that Philadelphia area. You got boxers, some football players, maybe some hockey players, basketball too. But not that many baseball players, so they were uh, they were going nuts for Trotty that whole time. It was such a beautiful thing. I gotta find that video on my uh, on my phone because I'll save that forever. Yeah, special. Yeah, that was I mean it, it was one of those goosebump moments where he walked onto the field and it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. The band that played yeah. before the game, <laughs> yeah. Millville. Yeah. So awesome. John Jay triple against the left field wall first time up. He finds first and second here with one out. Angels trailing by five. Almonte has been missing upstairs often so far this inning. Well, you can see where he's trying to throw his fastball. He's trying to go to that part of, of the zone that we saw the Houston Astros over the last few seasons with a lot of success throwing high fastballs, upper quadrant of the strike zone with a four-seamer. Quick pickoff, close play. Lagares gets back. Well, you see that so often. You know you did that in spring training. How often did you have those pickoff plays put on in spring training? Hey, I think you should do it during the season more, but you see that so much during the spring training. Stress it in spring training. Here's what I try to find out. In my limited time as a big leaguer, in my long time as a minor leaguer, you got to find out which guys to do it with. Mm -hmm. Certain guys, forget about it. You get them out of the rhythm, out of their game, because, as you know, example, Kevin Apia. Do I want to put a play on with Kevin Apia on the mound? No. Game on the line. No. When he already has a slider grip. Yeah. Yeah, no. no, you don't want any part of that one. <laughs> I always felt, and even coaching at the high school level, sometimes when a pitcher's having a tough time, the best way to get out of an inning is a pickoff. It allows you to slow it down as long as you're working the footwork. And they do that all the time, all the time in spring training. And it's all about timing. You know that. You either give the glove or as an infield, you look at the back of the head, and that's when you react to that. 
Buddy Black knows as a former pitcher himself, certain guys, you tell your middle infielders, hey, don't even come near the mountain. In fact, don't make eye contact with him. <laughs> with him at a second base. <laughs> don't distract him like that, please. This missing with the off speed. Everything has been upstairs, and for John Jay, he's getting some good looks here today. By the way, we used to call Bud Black Mr. Freeze because he was so cool. I can only imagine between him and Anthony Rendon. Ooh. <laughs> Who has the better blood pressure working between the two of them? Find that heartbeat. <laughs> Swing and a man is out with a tie break of ball, and down goes John Jay. That's it. You know what my connection with Buddy Black is? Besides the Angels 2002 as a pitching coach was. In 1986, it was my first time in any camp. Uh, just like Mr. Cool Anthony Rendon. But Buddy Black was the first major league pitcher I ever faced right out of college. It was spring training of 86, I was with the Rangers. And we were in Fort Myers against the Royals. Terry Park. Yes. With the uh, AstroTurf infield. Yeah. And the natural grass outfield. And I can tell you that Buddy Black made me look like somebody that just came out of college. <laughs> it was like three consecutive sliders, son goes to down. <laughs> he had that great uh, delivery himself. Oh. So smooth. He had the high leg kick. Not quite like Mark Langston, but pretty high up there himself. And Buddy hit his hands and his gloves very nice behind that right knee when he came up, right? Yeah. Did he try that grunt change up with you? Because he had a good fastball, but he would do that grunt change up. Do you think, okay, anytime you see a pitcher grunting, you figure you're rearing back and throwing a fastball. He used to love his change up that way. Hit hard. First baseman, Fuentes. Nice job. Steps on the bag, and the Angels are retired here in the fourth. It's all Rockies. They lead 7-2. And they're watching the Rockies, who put a seventh spot on the Angels in the fourth inning. Really taking over this ball game, but uh, nonetheless, uh, many fans travel from Southern California, where we are here on our set, over to the Phoenix area to watch Angels. And so glad to again remind you that uh, for the opener, there will be fans allowed to a limited capacity at the big a and that is just outstanding news yeah it really is and, and so in, in the twitter world we've had so many people asking when you going out to arizona we're going out there to watch a ball game and now they're gonna be able to see a game at the big a opening day jake faria he's gonna love that too loves his angels grew up an angel fan jake faria has done a very fine job for the angels third appearance already for the local product you'll face cj crone Learn that fastball and prone gesturing as to one of that top hand to do more work. Crone, Fuentes, and Hilliard here for the Rockies in the fifth. Again, a reminder this is a seven inning game. Yeah, Freya's fastballs can be 92 97. Also, throw his slider and a real good changeup. His delivery reminds me a little bit. Very pure right over the top. Michael Walker. It's good to see him back healthy now. I yes. Think Tampa. Now with the Rays, yeah. Well, he was so good early on with the Cardinals. Wow, was he a talent. I love Pedro Martinez. Waka, waka, waka. All the time he would take him <laughs> out. He would love that. Well, Jacob Faria. We saw him pitch against the Angels as a Ray, and I recall one outing when he was absolutely dominant. Yeah, he's had some... He's, had some pretty good numbers in his career. This is the kind of get the pitcher for Joe Madden, that swing guy, could give you some innings, could, could potentially be a starter for you. Could be a big part of this team overall as far as the staff. That's a great one at fastball. Tied him up. Let's see if there's some changes on the defensive side. As you know, here's, it is that time, Gooby. And not being there, it's going to make it a little more challenging to find <laughs> yes, these uh, changes yes. in the diamond. But it's all right. Here's a 3-2. Got it by him. Nice running fastball by Faria. That is out number one. He continues to impress. Good balance. And then he knows that Crone is looking fastball. He goes, you know what? I got a good fastball. I'm going to locate it on the outside part of the plate and got to buy him with the express. Got to get the express in, by the way. That's 60th anniversary. Uh, Nolan I, Ryan. I, I like that, yes. Josh Rojas now, uh, Jose Rojas at first base. Jose Rojas at first base. Remy for the short for the Angels. Defensive changes. Jack Mayfield at third base. 
And Scott Shubler is now in left field. And Jeremiah Jackson at second base. And Jordan Adams in center. New catcher for the Angels is Juan Gratero. Welcome back to the Angels, Juan. Boy. He looks good, huh? He's you lost talk a lot about of you talk about somebody that became a difference maker in effect for so many pitchers. He's got a little Jose Molina in him. Yeah, he does. He calls a great game. He frames the ball very, very well. And he teaches. Yep. I recall. What was his first major league hit was against Felix Hernandez, right? Up in Seattle, as I remember. I recall that um, it was a big moment because I was right next to the dugout later in the game, and boy, that whole dugout erupted. Longtime minor leaguer, and he's lost over 40 pounds. Swing and missing. Good job there by Faria again, straight over the top. Boy, will be a lot of deception on that delivery. And when you have a fastball over the top like that, it really sets up a changeup going this way to it. It's a good power changeup. It looks like it's going to be upper part and it drops. What a pitch by Faria. Two punch outs already for the local product. Working from the lineup and trying to earn a spot here with the Angels. Born in La Palma, attended Gar High School in Cerritos. By the way, that's a real good high school baseball program. Yeah, that's coached time. against them, I remember very, very well. That's a good pipeline right there. Yes. Rockies up 7 2, fifth inning. Glad to uh, have you listen to us here today. Jose Mora, Mark Gubiza, and uh, we'll have a few games here this spring. I know that uh, sometimes we're going to go back to the simulcast with Terry Smith has been doing a fantastic yeah, he job. He has. He's been outstanding. Along with his uh, engineer, Jorge Sevilla. Jorge. I text him quite a bit. He makes sure he gets those into Terry during the course of the game just to give him a little grief, just to keep him happy. Hilliard, one for one himself, left-handed batter. Walk, stolen base, RBI single. Boy, how, how do you make a, a, you know, go over the top, right? Hey, hey there's Jorge. There he is. Or, do it. Jorge, 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 Jorge. Yeah, Jorge. He's, probably, he's probably listening Jorge. right now going, oh, yeah. He'll start tapping that <laughs> desk there pretty soon. Oh, Pollo, you made it. It's swing. I was going to ask you. You see Faria go over the top. Yep. How do you make a four-seam fastball? run as much as he does it's a, and it, the big thing right now when you're talking about four seamers make sure that baseball is not only back in your hand it's on the fingertips oh, okay. that's where you're going to create that late break to it movement on the fingertips you relax the wrist but it's all about the baseball off the fingertips he does have some run here's Gratterall calling upstairs hits a spot immediately right there but Gratterall does a nice job he's saying hey this is where I want you to throw the ball trust me trust me behind the plate that's what you want from your catcher and it's Trust. convincing. Yeah. You convince a guy like, hey, I have conviction in this. Trust me. And he's looking, and he's looking all the time. He's looking at look, looking down where the feet are for the hitter. Where can I go with now? On that slider 3 2. Throw it in a good, very good spot. So we'll go back to conviction and your catcher telling you, listen, I know perhaps you don't want to throw this, but here's what I have. Look at Gradrol saying. He's keeping that mitt right there. He's saying, hit it. And he was late. He was jammed. I love that target even on the breaker ball. He's keeping that mitt low. He doesn't want to set that target up in the middle of the strike zone. He wants to keep it low. So if you make a mistake, it'll be below the knees. Boy, got him fooling with that breaker ball perhaps in the zone more than he wanted to. But down the goal, the Rockies, one, two, three. memorabilia for jerseys hats balls and more visit angels.com authentics there's an authentic right there the young man who is keeping the parents busy out there on the berm so he's got a combination there gooby baseball or soccer here why not be authentic i'm going with soccer soccer it's busy with that uh, we can't even call that a big baseball but it's keeping everybody around that area quite busy yeah, the last few pitches I threw was probably that size. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Stevenson on the mound now for the Rockies. They lead 7-2 last season with the Reds. Ten games, 9.90 ERA for Robert Stevenson. Well, going for all this to be possible, we got to 
give a shout out first of all to the Angels PR staff who have been so magnificent all throughout the spring going back to last year yes you know us not being there all the time and not having the same kind of access Adam Chatsko Grace McNamee Matt Birch keeping us informed on everything going on with the Angels uh, giving us the lineups and everything else who would possibly be pitching in the game way early in the morning so we can prepare for the game and believe us it does not go unappreciated from all of us here Luis Renifo comes out for the first time he replaces Franklin Barreto and he has been pretty impressive with his power to the opposite field including yesterday a long home run he is strong A's. he is strong lost some weight in much better shape remember last year Joe Bam described that he goes you know looks to me like a running back yeah, remember those arms and everything huh? we saw last year it's like yeah <laughs> he was super strong last year sometimes though when you get that big and you get that tight you just you're not able to have that free and easy swing and that sets you down sometimes one thing when Hifo needs is exactly that flexibility and to play free more because he's such a great athlete and I think you know bulking up which is obviously a trend or has been a trend throughout baseball but it took away from even his running game. Yeah, and that's the one thing I'm still looking for, that running game. All those numbers he had in the minor leagues where he was 30-plus stolen bases, you'd like to see that again from him. Show him better range, too, in the field. Gives him a chance to play a number of different positions. No doubt. You can see also the adjustments in the batter's spot for Brent Heifel. Hands a little bit higher. Jeremy Reed, his hitting coach, John Malley also working sort hard with him to, to be more athletic in the batter's box. got a 2-2 count. Not quite Craig Council with the hands up that high, but a little bit <laughs> higher than we've seen him in the past. Robert Stevenson, as mentioned, 10 games for Cincinnati last season, 9.9 .9 ERA. He's acquired by the Rockies via trade with the Reds in November of last year. Having all the changes for Cincinnati, that was a team who was in the playoffs who pitched exceptionally well How about in the postseason, that? and all of a sudden, so many players from that team. Well, the rotation. Yeah. Enviable rotation. Yes. Last season. By the way, Castillo, a number member that he is he is dominant. Trevor Bauer now over with the Dodgers. Iglesias here with the Angels now. So so many really good arms. You you wonder why you would do that, because you're you're very competitive. That's a great baseball town, Cincinnati has been for many many years tradition some of the traditional opener yep. is always in always. Cincinnati yeah it's pretty much a party and a parade for many many years yeah we were goes down to the breaking ball one out we were there that one time when it was an extra inning it would have 14 a game in right game. That was Chris Iadetta might have won the game that day. I think you're right and I I believe it was also the return to Cincinnati for one Josh Hamilton yes yes I remember that was fairly cold that day. And I believe it was uh, starting Cincinnati, very cold as he mentioned, like 35, 36 degrees. Michael Eaves was with us. Yes. And um, the next stop, I believe, was Texas. So Josh Hamilton was saying, <laughs> I got to face, face the media. <laughs> I just signed this contract. I got to face the media. This is Cincinnati, former Red, former Ranger. You know what? He did very well in facing all the questions and everything that went along with him signing the contract with the Angels. Well, you might as well get out of the way quick as possible right away. Jose Rojas hit a blast yesterday against a lefty. And all he does when he shows up in Angels camp is hit. Yes. Jose Rojas from Anaheim. Another local product. Vanguard University. He can hit. He can hit. Boy, can he. A couple of years ago, we were calling him spring training. Ross was not even invited to camp. But he did so well. He ended up getting maybe 30, 40 at bats. He was the best hitter in camp. And I'm not afraid to tell you, he was the best hitter in camp. But he was not even invited to camp. But he was a minor leaguer that they had no choice but to keep pulling him up. How many times we were asked that question, when is Ross going to make it up to the big leagues? He just hits everywhere he's at. And we were thinking the same thing. He's hitting. You need to have him up here at this level. 
He's got versatility. He can play third. He's played first base. He's put up some monster numbers in the upper minor leagues, and we are hopeful that his time will come because he uh, he has caught the eye of Joe Madden, number one, and obviously Perry Manassian now. And that depth chart needs to be big at any given season, especially now with 162 coming up. That was a good take by Rojas. He is a ball with a walk. I like his hands where they're at, too, set up to be able to swing the bat. Well, we're talking about Buddy Black, fifth year with the Rockies, former Angel pitching coach and also former Angel executive. How about a flip flash drop down, Buddy Black? Remember when he was with Cleveland? There's that leg kick, that good breaking ball he had. Nasty. He's really hides the baseball so well behind that back tip. And he can field his position well, too. Look at Blackie go! <laughs> Blackie getting it done. Rosie, I, I've probably told you this story before, but so we're playing the Angels. We have a four-game set. And Reggie Jackson's at home run number 499. So we're all young pitchers following Bud Black. He's pitching the first game of the series. We're like, I don't want to be in the record books. I don't want to be the one to give up the home run to Reggie Jackson. Black says, I don't worry, man. I'll be that guy. And you know he didn't want to do that because he's ultra competitive, but he did give up a home run to Reggie Jackson, the 500th career home run for Mr. October was against Bud Black. Buddy called it. <laughs> Rojas advances on the wild pitch. It's one of those things where you know that every every time you deliver the baseball, it's like, not this one, please. And then yeah. also it's like, oh, no. It was funny because he came back to the dugout after that. We're all like, we were talking, <laughs> like, trying to be real shy about it. We're looking over at him. We're like, thanks, man. Thank you. And, he goes, and he's looking at him, really? You're going to say that? And we're like, hey, there's an old saying, better you than me. <laughs> Give up that 500th home run career-wise you know for Reggie Jackson. It's something I recall about the uh, 2002 coaching staff of Fredo Griffin, Joe Madden, Orlando Mercado, Ron Renneke, is how loose they were. Yep. Uh, Mickey Hatcher. Oh, Mickey, yes. I remember Joe Madden. And Buddy Black used to be the last guys on the bus on the staff bus. And after any tough loss, they were also the loudest, saying, hey, how's everybody doing? Mm -hmm. Pepe Negro, just Buddy Black. And before you know it, it was like the whole bus was cracking up because of these two. And sometimes guys didn't know, like, oh, my God, I'm, you know, do I need to be quiet right now? But these two guys brought that attitude. Yeah. Just to bring perspective to a loss in a game that is one of 162. Yeah, that's the thing, huh? 162 games. Yeah, you want to win every game. That's your mindset. Everybody wants to win every single game. But if you let it drag on, you can have a prolonged losing streak because of that. You, you got to be able to relax and have fun. And when you look at all the guys that you mentioned from that staff, all of them played on the really good managers during their playing career at one point or another. And they noticed that and kept it going for the Angels there in 2002. Bobby Ramos? Yeah. Oh, yes. Does it get any better than that? Yes. <laughs> and when you look back at that season, as we're going to be talking about that 60th anniversary for the Angels, the A's were unbelievable. They had that winning streak, yet the Angels win the World Series. Jack Mayfield, who came in to replace Anthony Rendon, goes down as his first AB here. Rendon, 0 for 2 today. But Gooby, there's something to be said about how you pick a, a staff. And but you know, Mike Sosha, credit to him too, because these are all guys that came from under that tree. Yeah. And then, you know, Bud Black came from a different organization. So often you see it when you're when your manager have guys that come through your system, but you were willing to go out of your comfort zone and bring someone else in from another organization as well. You got Renicky who managed in the big leagues. You got Buddy Black, you got Joe Madden. You got a Dino Ebel who's knocking on the door. Yes. There's no doubt. Dino now coaching third for the Dodgers is knocking on the door, and he deserves that opportunity. As we see Jack Kruger coming in for the Angels, a young catcher, also a local product. Very athletic catcher. There's nothing worse than an uptight staff, let me tell you. Yeah. It doesn't do anything for the veterans, and it makes young players not play loose Yeah, you, and play afraid. Going back to the more relaxed you are, the better you're going to be. Look at these two guys. Success yeah. in the big leagues. Yeah. World Series rings. Gallego, the bench coach, 
Jose Molina's got two rings, one with the Angels, one with the Yankees. You might see Ho Jose Molina as a manager at some point well, as well. I would say so, too. Yes. Well, when you talk about a guy that commanded respect behind the plate, well, I always, you always look back as a pitcher, you uh, well, I would have loved to be able to throw them because you can't get, you couldn't get nothing by him. Or any of the three Molinos for yes. crying out loud, you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> I knew Benji well, I know oh. he was phenomenal himself. You talk about a clutch hitter. How clutch was he? Shorten up a swing, he made contact. There's a long swing there by Kruger, who's got good power to right center field. There was a game we're doing uh, in the spring, you were there. And Kruger came into the game maybe like in the sixth or seventh inning, but gets two at bats, drives in five runs and within two innings. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we have our, our invited guests for the post game lined up. We're all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, change plans. Five ribbons and two ABs for a youngster? Yes. It's him. Especially a product here from Southern California. Yeah, it's solid behind the plate. And it's good bat as well. You mentioned the power numbers. 23 pitches for the new Rockies pitcher, Robert Stevenson. Rockies, Rodriguez went three innings, gave up four hits, two runs. No walks, two strikeouts. Yancy Almonte went one inning, one hit, one walk, one strikeout. Here's a 3-2. Fights it off and good job there protecting the plate. Three two slider. Steve, he can rush his fastball. It's averaged nearly 95 miles per hour, but he throws a ton of sliders. You know that swing right there reminds me of something Joe Madden has talked about and other managers too. It's going back to contact. That is a protection type of swing. And not a the outcome of the walk, the strikeout, or the home run, which has hurt the game. There's three outcomes. The walk, strikeout, and home run. That's you go back another to another good swing right there. Go back to the, the success that the Dodgers had last season. You remember a couple postseasons in a row where they were a club that would strike out a lot in those big moments. Mookie Betts comes in there. He oh. had success in that 2018 Red Sox team where they were that two out approach, the two strike approach. Well, you know what? It's all about making some contact because you're not getting home runs against the best pitchers. And when you see that in the postseason, it's tough. You hit a home run on a mistake. Is guy exactly. So you're looking to make good contact. Hey, you can fight off some tough pitches. Eventually, you're going to get one that you can hit, but you got to make sure you make some contact, especially with two strikes. Still fighting off some pitches. Good job there by Kruger. Now Theo Epstein, who is part now of Major League Baseball, is trying to bring the game back. Yeah. He's not afraid to say, hey, I was one of those guys that had all these other beliefs that got us away from the nature of Playing baseball, yeah. running the bases, yeah. putting the ball in play, being a two-strike hitter, not pitching upstairs for pitchers, pitching to your strength. Yeah. The Angels last year, fourth best in baseball as far as contact percentage. The Dodgers, fifth best. So when you look at good offenses, it's making good contact as well. Roy's at second base. He walks. And he takes a fantastic slider, strike three for Kruger. He goes down. We have completed five. All Rockies here to take the mound 7-2 Rockies lead in the top of the sixth inning seventh rounder by the Angels back in 2019 after three seasons at Auburn he is a very interesting story Gooby because not a whole ball of innings but he can really get you some K's in velocity in the uptick so far in his career well, average almost a strikeout for innings pitch in college and that's a great conference here at Auburn Bo Jackson Frank Thomas Greg Olson, one of our old friends as far as a pitcher as well. It's a lot of talent at that Auburn baseball program. We know about the football program and basketball program, but baseball as well. Nice crowd on hand today at Tempe Diablo Stadium as we sit here in our Southern California set. Beautiful day. 82 degrees at game time at Tempe Diablo Stadium. And in case you missed it, Joe Adele. Made it lo pretty loud around here today. <laughs> Long home run for Adele back in the second inning. And so far, that's been it for the Angels. A two-run homer for Joe Adele, his first hit of the spring. They yeah, will reference Bo Jackson. That was a Bo Jackson-type home run for Joe Adele. Batter for the Rockies, Elias Diaz, the catcher. Short right field and talking about Joe Adele. Get it done. One out. So let's go Gooby from the glove to this. That is a perfect swing to lift that baseball and go a long, long 
away for Joe Adele. First hit of spring. Had to work with some walks. Some good contact, too, as far as outs he made. Hit the ball hard, but that one was hit hard, and no one's going to catch that. Not even a fan out in the outfield beyond the wall was going to make that play. And, yes, Joe Adele has struggled. He, the first one to tell you that, but he doesn't shy away from telling the truth to the media. Mm -hmm. So pointing the finger at himself. But also, he is not shy in letting you know that he's quite confident that things will turn around. Boy, a great interview, by the way. Isn't huh? he, Jose? He's one of the best to ever have when you get a chance to talk to him. And he's, he's all about this work ethic right now. He's going to keep working at it. He's going to refine all those things as far as the routes in the outfield, be more consistent, not chasing out of the strike zone. At that home run, he had a good walk. Remember, he didn't chase a high fastball, didn't chase a slider out of the strike zone as well. It's a home run and a walk today for Joe Adele. Great parents. Very athletic family all the way around. Davis Daniels, we talk about, he is from Atlanta, Georgia. And I mentioned Auburn University, a Tommy John surgery. And 11th rounder with the Brewers. He went back to school, hurt his elbow. As Rogers throws it foul, left side. Rogers so far, a strikeout and a single, infield single. Scored a run. Rockies put up a seven spot in the fourth inning. And that's all they needed so far here against the Angels. See Daniel with that over the top break, uh, fastball, same thing with his curveball. You can see that a lot more in baseball. Over the top for the fastball, four seamer upstairs, followed up with a curveball. Like same arm slot. Like what I see here from him. Moved from Atlanta to Alabama in second grade, and his father attended UNC Chapel Hill. Older brother went to Alabama. He considers that curveball his out pitch and his fastball his best pitch. So his older brother went to Alabama and he went to Auburn. There oh, must be some yeah. interesting conversations <laughs> at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't like each other oh, a whole lot. Oh, that rivalry. Yeah. Nine pitches so far for the right-hander, who for many has a very good spin rate on that fastball. Gooby. What was your spin rate on your fastball? Uh, I'll, I'll Any remember. idea? No. I, you know, the big thing I always heard was you had late movement. And that's basically good spin rate. It's that late movement at the plate and the, the end of the strike zone. That's what they always would say. Hey, you had great late life on your fastball and slider. So I imagine it was probably pretty good as far as spin rate. Is that a way of saying, but your velocity was just okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I... Jo I when I pitched over in Japan one year, I, I closed some games. I also started. But when I was closing, I just reared back and threw as hard as I could. And they, I touched 98, 99 yes, at that point. Did. Uh, but normally, I was around 92, 93, 94 with sink action. I was better in the lower 90s than I was in the upper 90s. There's a fastball with a great spin rate, catches his own, and that is strike three for Rogers. He goes down. Well, the Angels relievers for Rio are standing again. A clean. One, two, three, three strikeouts with Jake Faria. And now Daniel follows with two quick outs. Well, the, the advantages that pitchers have with Raf Soda, we talked about that with Andrew Heaney working on his changeup or driveline, where you're able to do things to be able to pick up and get your arm in a better throwing position, working with some weighted baseballs, all the different techniques and drills. We know Alex Cobb has done that during the offseason. Shohei Otani has done that during the offseason. This day, there's a little added effort to be able to get better. I would love to have had that opportunity to do that. I used a, well, you remember, I had a weighted baseball yes. back in the day, but I didn't really throw it because it was really heavy, but I did it to be able to simulate throwing motion. It made me feel better, my arm looser when I, when I did take the mound. But pitchers today, with all the different data and, and the different techniques, you could be better. Boy, I'll tell you what, it's, that's why you're seeing so many pitchers from an upper 90s. And being consistent with that, we before to get the upper 90s, you had to just really just throw as hard as you can and fall that's, as you throw it. That's pretty firm right there from Daniel. Wow. But dry line, drive line has really helped a lot of pitchers. That was up in Washington State yeah. where many pitchers have gone and to try to find and refine and clean up. And that's going back to the baseball off the fingertips to be able to create better spin and run that fastball up. That deception, even though you think physically, in the physics part of it, you, the baseball doesn't rise but it gives the illusion that it does when it's out of the fingertips to be able to get that upper part of the strike zone. I mean, think about where the baseball is coming from. It's not coming from a flat surface where you're standing as a pitcher. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's, uh, 
we always say hitting is so hard. This one will find the gap in left center field where it will also find the glove of one Jordan Adams on the beautiful play by the youngster in center. One, two, three for Daniel. Simple better. It's going to have a softball, the number one ranked girls softball team in Michigan. And they got approval from Joe Madden to go out there and do the simple better. And with the proceeds, some of it going to Joe Madden and his foundation. But boy, he's so proud this morning of wearing that shirt and telling the stories. And Joe involved with so many charities yeah. and helping people and, and, and tying in communities. But to see girls softball represented this morning was very special yeah, on the zoom was, yeah that was great to see joe do that and, and it really it <laughs> explains joe so well you know he's all about just doing the simple things you don't have to be spectacular that day just do the routine stuff and the other stuff will take care of itself a portion of the proceeds will go to the miracle league a charitable partner of joe madden's respect 90 foundation so any way in which we could help any way in which baseball can tie all these different points across to do better, why not? The Eskimos ranked number one in the state of Michigan and 20th in the national rankings for high school softball. So, girls, keep it up. I, lo I love watching softball. It really, I mean, it, the fundamentals, we were talking about a lot about that in spring training for the Angels, the fundamentals of softball, oh. high school softball players and college softball players, phenomenal. New pitcher for the Rockies, lefty. El Cris Olivares delivers to Scott Shebler. Shebler come in to hit in the spot vacated by Juan Lagares. Lagares again, two for two with a run scored, and he is making a nice case for himself. Six for nine in camp. Six for nine. I'm guessing my math is pretty good on that. I'll say about 667 batting average at that well, point. Not to offend anybody, but um, when the Angels sign him, I go, well, they just signed their best defensive outfielder right there. Yep. Oh, yes. Fearless. He can go get him. Fearless in the outfield. And can back it up with hardware. Gold Glover for the Mets. And Lagares actually was rewarded with an early multi-year contract by the Mets. And his career did not pan out the way they thought it would. But he is on his way back now. Right into the shift. Shebler grounds out to the shortstop for the first out. That is Trejo now at shortstop. Alan Trejo. As we uh, give credit to the Angels PR staff and media personnel for their help all throughout the spring and, and going back to last season, but also, Gooby, I uh, know we're looking forward to doing this a lot and uh, throughout the spring. Our camera personnel and Tempe Diablo, whom we always have a great time with. Yes. But uh, Judd, Mickey, Mike, Karina. Yeah. All do a fantastic job to uh, make our jobs easier. And hey, Karina, is Karina. That, yeah, yes. Always say, Karina, watch out for the foul balls now. Yes. Hey, we're getting some outstanding views, great angles here today. Here's Joe Adele, boy, and he was loud as Joe Mann likes to say. Hey, Mick, Mick, I missed those hamburgers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> How about the truck? Yes, <laughs> I missed that. Great work, guys. I mean, you are our eyes right now and oh, yes. the odds are so many all throughout baseball can't say it enough hey my there you go i know mike always has to uh fight the wind and there's times yeah. when we see that we see that wind come and go hey wait a minute yeah keep it steady out there my friend <laughs> be careful now yeah they all do great work and a perfect day for Mike. Yes. We ordered that for him today. Hit hard to the third base and loses it. Picks it up. Nope. And Adele with another rocket. He's had some outstanding exit velocity off the bat yes. when he's hit the ball this spring training. Sometimes you don't you don't see the results as far as batting average for him, but he's hit the ball hard.
It should be an error on the third baseman for the Rockies, but boy, look at this swing in the top of contact. I'm talking about. Brought his hands in there well. Lower part of the strike zone inside and turned on it. Hit it well for Joe Adele. We've about to say that a lot this year in the coming season. Hit it well for Joe Adele. Well, that's a good one. Keep it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can make a T-shirt out of that. <laughs> I'll we'll be... get Joe Madden to do it in a Zoom, and we'll be able to get it working. Joe Adele, what an endorsement here from Gooby. Here's good friend Jeremiah Jackson. Here's the batter. Little bit of that fastball. And Jeremiah Jackson, part of that nice group the Angels have with players. My goodness, this kid. In 65 games back in 2019, 23 home runs, setting a record. Yes, that's that's impressive. 23 home runs in his 65 games. So if you move that out to 130, you're talking about 46 home runs, and then you push it out to 162 game schedule. Legit power. And it seems like they have called a walk. Yes, walk on Olivares. Oh, that'll move Joe Adele. Speaking of Bud Black, he had that move down. It never got called for a ball. I shouldn't say that, though, because they'll say it was never a ball. So are you saying that perhaps Buddy <laughs> has tried bringing that into camp and yeah. in case you get caught? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and once there's a pitch you cross that uh, back foot towards the, the pitching rubber, you have to go home. But a lot of times you'll see a left-handed pitcher will bring the knee past the pitching rubber but keep the foot in front. So that's how you keep that runner from going. Jackson a little late on that fastball, which is a good one. And he'll be retired on the F9 as Adele gets back quickly after a bluff over at second base. Two down. Angels are pretty quiet offensively here today. Other than Adele and a two-run homer back in the second inning. Well, say for the first three games or so, we didn't see the ball carry all that well in Arizona or even Florida. And supposedly the ball on the average will carry about five feet less with the new design, which should bring the game back, we think. But boy, last three or four games, we have seen some moonshots yes. all around baseball. And we know hitters are getting the at-bats, getting yeah. more comfortable. But here's the thing. If you're going if, if to be a home run hitter, I want to see you as a legit home run hitter. Yeah. Not a, a miss swing, and then all of a sudden you look up, and it's a home run. The one, the one thing that, that, that changed over the years in baseball is that pitchers used to be a, such an advantage. You know this early yeah. in spring training because the hitters were all, the only thing they were timing on was a fastball, maybe a changeup. But you're seeing pitchers now really with their good breaking stuff from the very first time. We used to always throw a fastball changeup. It's different. Adams says it to left field. It's been carrying well that way, but it'll drop right into the glove of the left fielder and for out number three the angels strand a runner they are losing 17. this broadcast is going to be with a softball now with a t-shirt uh is that, seven, is that tom brady michigan hey he's everywhere hey by the way you see the spot right there we pull out a little bit obviously our, our wonderful beat writers for the angels have had to get up on that hill sometimes just to watch work counts because there's been no access like in the past. Yeah. So you know what? I applaud all of them because they're yes. trying to find those stories somehow. Yeah. In fact, they've gone higher than that <laughs> to find the stories. Such a beautiful facility down there in Tempe, Tempe Diablo Stadium. Brady, the new pitcher for the Angels, Danny Brady. In single A back in 2019, another good arm and another young pitcher that the Angels are adding to their depth chart. He is from Vineland, New Jersey. Know that area well. He's got the good hair working, too. It's also a little trouty area there, too. Yeah. All play for Gratterall. Seventh rounder for the Angels back in 2017. Danny Brady went to East Carolina University. So are they, are they the Pirates down there in East Carolina? Do I remember their nickname, the Pirates? It's a good baseball program. I know a college baseball program. I, I have no idea how I remember that one. You, I have no idea. It's your area. 
<laughs> connection between Philly, yeah. Vineland, <laughs> East Carolina University. Yeah. In 2019 for Inland Empire. For Brady. Facing Connor Joe here. As Bud Black would say, that's a good fuzz at the upper part of the strike zone. Four seamer just a little bit above. Yes, it is. And for a guy that throws that hard, you think about his career, Gooby. He's got 144 and two-thirds innings in the minor leagues. 157 strikeouts, only 44 walks. That's tremendous. Yes, it is. Spins this one, and Gratterall quickly tosses it out. Nearly a four-to-one ratio. Brady strikeouts. Second camp invite. He was part of the 60-man pool last summer over in Long Beach. He's 94-96 curveball change and slider. That's hit hard by Joe. Who's up for the first time. Boy, watch out. I'm glad things are spread out out there. Oh, a screaming line drive there by Connor Joe. Well, when I saw a hitter like that jumping on my fastball, I, you knew that. I was I was always known as a 3-2 slider guy. I'd be throwing a breaking ball right now. You willing to back it up? No. Uh, you know what? It was funny because I can control wait, my slider. Wait a minute. I can control wait. my slider better than my fastball. Time I can out. throw first right. Time out, time out, time I out. hated hitters. You know that. So your ego got in the way. You, <laughs> wanna, you didn't want to repeat inside because no. you thought he was on it. Yes. I would go right to my slider. <laughs> it worked for you. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> And there it was, the slider. And it's like I learned from uh, a pitcher in Kansas City who, who ended up being with the Braves as well in the World Series, Charlie D. Brown. Oh. He threw a 3-2 changeup every time. And it's so I'm thinking, how did the hitters not know that's coming? And I knew for uh, after a while, everyone knew I was going to throw a 3-2 slider because I could control it. I couldn't control my fastball move too much. And on the hands a little bit, but the ball's going to carry left field. Joe with a wonderful at-bat. He gets a home run. Gooby, that's why you are right. <laughs> why Connor Jones showed that he does have some quick hands. How did he keep that ball from traveling that much? Well, only he knows, but uh, it's now 8-2 Colorado. Yeah, he tracked that fastball the inside part, yeah, brought his hands in. And that, that swing when he hit that one really well would keep me away from there. Well, he missed by three inches. Yeah. That's the difference right there in pitching. And then that's a late movement at the end. And that's a nice play. The old using the hat. Is that is that No Way Romero is doing that? Whatever it takes. No Way with Cincinnati now. Yes. There's another fly ball left field, also carrying, and this one will be caught by Shubler. Yeah, No Way was known to be uh, be able to make those plays on those home runs with his hat the bullpen over the years for the Angels. Now, what you mentioned with Cincinnati, one of our good friends over the years. Outstanding. Great guy. Outstanding uh, local kid and hard worker. You got to earn every inning in the big leagues. As a batter, he easily drops in the base hit in short right field. That is Elodis Montero, the batter. Hey, tomorrow, looking forward to Jaime Berea on the mound. What a sensational job last season for him. Made a big adjustment. We've talked about this so often in the past. Much, much better against right-handed batters. And that big thing is, be able to throw his slider, stay on top, run the fastball in. He's always had a good changeup as well, especially if be able to go against lefties. But the improvement against right-handed batters, huge for Berea. That's something we'll keep an eye on even tomorrow in the game to see how he does against right-handed batters, because they had tremendous success against them prior to last season. Much better as far as making that adjustment. Big Loggy is a batter. He's filling in uh, the position vacated by C.J. Crone, who went one for three, grounds to the third. Second one, first. Nice pick at first base by Rojas. Double play. Yeah, the Rockies had another one, and now they lead 8-2. Mariners. Runs on eight hits, one error. Angels, two wow. runs, five hits, no errors. Rockies put up a seven spot in the fourth inning, and that's been pretty much it for their offense. And the Angels, the only two runs coming on a two-run two -run homer by Joe Adele back in the second inning. Levar is still on the mound. He made 18 pitches the first 
Tommy stood out there back in the sixth as a first batter Gratterall skies it to the infield of the first baseman. Connor Joe will keep it. Just a reminder, stay tuned after the game is Mark Kubiza and I will bring you the Angels Five postgame show. Break it all down for you. Talk about Jose Quintana. Talk about the Angels rotation. Obviously the bullpen today. And Joe Adele and that mammoth blast over to deep left field today. Buddy Black trying to get his team to a three and two record. They came in at two and two. The Angels came in at three and two. Both teams also have one tie. As Luis Rangifo now Gooby turns around from the right side where Joe Adele, confidence has always been there. Who knows what a game like today can do also in the way he's played in right field. Yeah, I, I, the home run, we love that. Yeah. The walk, the next at bat was excellent. He didn't chase anything out of the strike. So even that next at bat, he hit the ball hard at third base. So it's good to see that. When you see a, a young player like Joe Adele with the talent that he has, smiling, talking, that's how, you, that's how you get better. At some point, you want success, and you can kind of build on that. When you, when you struggle, then all of a sudden you doubt yourself. There's no reason for Joe Adele to doubt himself. His, his the talent is there. It's just a matter of getting the reps. Love these conversations among young players. Adele, Jordan Adams, Jeremiah Jackson among them, too. And how they challenge themselves. I mean, these guys are there early. Get their work in cages, T work, outfield work. Can't say enough about the job that Bruce Hines is doing yeah. as an outfield instructor now, Angels first base coach, back with the organization. Yeah, the, the more reps you get on, on reads off the off the bat as an outfielder, especially going to your left, going to your right, coming in on the baseball, going back on the baseball, getting yourself in a good throwing position. That's sometimes that's something that really a lot of people don't talk about, but when you come in and charge a baseball, how you get yourself in a position to feel the ball and get that ball out there to go quickly to make a throw to a base. And he felt we'll go down for out number two. Well, the yeah, Angels one out away. I needed that strike zone back in the day. <laughs> I might have got a few more. <laughs> I might have got a few more outs. Well, the Myers is lefty has looked really good. Tall, lanky. Try to sneak a little Bach move there earlier, but couldn't get it done. He's uh, attending his first major league spring training, added to the Rockies 40 men roster this past November. By the way, what an outstanding job we're seeing from the umpires in, in spring, both in Arizona, the Cactus League, and down in the Grapefruit League as well. Pat Holberg behind the play today, along uh, with him, 20 year veteran Jim Reynolds, Adrian Johnson, 12 year veteran. And Edwin Moscoso, who is from Venezuela. Good to see that. I missed the conversations having with them as you run out to get that interview after oh, the game. Oh, my goodness. It's so much fun. Those guys have a blast. Oh, my goodness. Because it's, it's practice for them as well. Adrian Johnson, and, and these umpires involved also with the charity that they do yes. every single year. But, boy, those conversations, you're not kidding. Dana the Muth would have me cracking up so much before going on air. Kerwin Danley, who's a SoCal yeah. product, always uh, very pleasant to talk to. Ted Barrett. Ted Barrett, wow. And his son. Oh, great, yes. By the way, how about Ted Barrett being a, uh, a boxer? Sparring partner for Mike Tyson. Don't mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very nice man, but I still would, would uh, test him at all. Rojas walked for the second time today. He's got a couple of very good at-bats here again. The Anaheim native for the first base keeps the game alive and the inning alive here for the Angels, trailing by six. I always have a good time with uh, Jim Wolf. Yes. Normally hey. throws a ball harder to no. the mound than Jim Wolf. Yeah, his brother was a pretty good pitcher in the major leagues as well. Yeah, Randy Wolf. He's from the San Fernando Valley. My neck of the woods. Yeah, so I mean, spring training presents us with a lot of opportunities to make these connections yep. and, and also make the umpires humanize a little yes. bit. I mean, these are not machines out there. No. You know, and Albert Poole said something very interesting the other day. Talking to Bob Nightingale, he goes, hey, I don't want to see the automatic strikes on with a robot. He goes, this is a game played by humans. Yep. We all make mistakes. Umpires sometimes do make mistakes. Yes. But the, the characters, they are. A lot of them were so, so much fun. I mean, and talking hey, about instant replay and things like yeah. that was Albert referring to, too. Yeah. 
the heat of the moment, you always have your disagreements with them, even though most of the times they are right and you're wrong. It's still that those friendships you have, you have them forever. And, and even when you run into them down the road when they're not umpiring anymore, the, those relationships you've created over the years is, is really good. I always run into Bill Miller over in spring training and mm -hmm. so many of them. And How about Jordan Baker? He can, uh, he, he's a tall umpire. Grounded by Mayfield right side is going to do it. The Rockies will take this one and the game is over and they take this one from the Angels. Eight to two. As a reminder, stay tuned for post game, Gooby. You and I are going to be back in yes. Gooby. Don't go very far no, because it's just so I'm, I'm having so much fun with you, Jose. We're coming back on Fox Sports West. 8-2, Rockies over the Angels in seven.